In this film, we're going to demonstrate how to produce charcoal briquettes from biomass waste. In this example, we've used maize cobs, but the same process can be applied to any biomass waste material. You will need a kiln, a briquette press, and some dry biomass waste material. If your biomass isn't completely dry, then your kiln won't burn hot enough for carbonisation to take place. You can find out how to make the simple kiln and briquette press examples that we use in this demonstration at www.madegood.org. Okay. So the first step is, we're going to use some of these dried leaves, any dried leaves will do, but we've used maize leaves today. Once you have everything ready, you will first need to fill the kiln. Turn the drum on its side and stuff the air vents on the bottom with a material that ignites easily. Here we're using dried maize leaves. So yeah, you really have to make sure that the leaves are dry. Before starting the burn, place the drum on top of three stones so that the air can flow through the holes in the bottom. So like I say, remember we're going to kick these stones away to make sure they're on right on the edge of the stones. Put a large stick in the centre of the drum and fill with your biomass material. In this example, we're alternating layers of maize cobs with layers of maize leaves to aid combustion. The stick will be removed at the end, leaving a hollow chimney through the centre of the kiln, improving the flow of oxygen. Look down the centre, yeah. we've got our chimney. Light the material at the bottom of the barrel. The burning material will produce a lot of smoke. The fumes are really coming straight up through the middle. Now for a while what's going to happen is, we're going to get a lot of this smoke coming out. And what that is, is there will still be some moisture left. And if you feel the smoke, you can feel it's a bit damp. After 10 minutes or so, the smoke will be hot enough to ignite, making the fire burn more cleanly. After another 10 minutes or so, the kiln will be ready to cover. Carefully remove the stones from under the drum while supporting the drum with a stick. Place the metal cover over the opening in the top of the kiln. Seal the bottom edges and the top of the drum with sand or dirt to prevent oxygen from entering. The combination of extreme heat and lack of oxygen will cause the carbonisation process to take place. Wait at least two hours before opening. Remove the lid and inspect your yield. Any unburnt material must be separated from the blackened material. But don't throw it away. You can include it in your next burn. An improved yield will result from better judgement of when to put the lid on the kiln. This is something you'll probably perfect after about your second or third attempt. You now need to crush your charcoal. There are many ways to do this. Adding water while crushing will prevent dust from spreading around. For large quantities, you may want to invest in a charcoal crushing machine. Now you're ready to make the binder. Any starchy material can be used for this, such as banana, aloe or cornstarch. Here we're using arrowroot. Add one grated arrowroot okay. to two and a half litres of boiling water so until thick boiling and water sticky. Very, very hot water. Okay, so we're going to put this in. We'll mix it in. Combine the mixture with the charcoal dust. Once your charcoal paste has a good consistency, you're ready to make the briquettes.
Fill the cup with the charcoal paste and place it inside the wooden block. Cover with the plunger and hit with a hammer to compress the mixture into a briquette. Push up the ejector to remove the briquette. Rinse the cup and repeat as necessary. Leave your briquettes out to dry in the sun for three to four days before use. Congratulations, you've just made charcoal from an otherwise waste material without chopping down a single tree. For more step-by-step -step guides like this one, head over to www.madegood.org.